Yeah, Grady's turned the corner since coming back. So yep. what would you see from Grady at least? Yeah, I think it's good, man. You're starting to see some of the uh some of the off ball stuff that, you know, obviously he's gonna need to hit shots, right? Like that's that's it. That's what's his bread and butter in the NBA. But the difference between you being just a state a spot up shooter mm -hmm. and having a little more to your game to where you were a lottery pick yeah. is some of that off ball stuff. Some of the being able to work as a screener and then after you set the screen get into something to be able to pump fake out of the corner and get into something base like keep your defender on your hip mm -hmm. as you i think that was against Najee marshall too actually yeah, yeah. to kind of pump fake out of the corner and, yep. and then get him on the hip for the for the little sh uh, short corner shot um those are the kind of things he, he has some passing verve too that we've mostly only seen sure. in transition but if the raptors develop we, you know have more space in the, the lines generally or he starts playing a little bit more with the starters you'll see that come to life i've just been i've been encouraged that Again, the shot is the most important thing, but how quickly the shot being back a little bit, and we talked about this early in the season where even though his shot wasn't dropping in the first couple games, he did a lot of this off-ball stuff. He did a lot of the movement stuff that at least helps your team. Like, there's a gravity to you even if your shots aren't dropping. And then when the shots weren't going down, the confidence seemed to fall apart where like it was a lot of pump faking when you don't need to pump fake mm -hmm. pump fake step into a floater range shot that you don't have in your package yet or travel or something force a bad pass because you don't you know trust your ability to sidestep for a three or something like that and then we saw a lot of that with the 905 where mm -hmm. like yeah there was no point guard down there at that at that time either it was awkward but i'm i'm a little I'm a little surprised and very encouraged at how quickly it's come back yeah. at the NBA level, given where he last was when I saw him at 905, which was it was improving, but he didn't look ready for the NBA yet. Yeah, I mean, to make the comparison, like, at the same age, when we, when I did this number with you, but, like, he was shooting worse from three at the same age <laughs> compared to Bruno in, in the G League, which is, obviously, like, he's a much better shooter than Bruno. I'm just, my point is that he was really struggling with everything. For him to come back and bounce back this way is really promising. I think, number one, for him to score twice on baseline out of bound plays, mm -hmm. that's gonna be huge for him as a movement shooter. They should look for him a lot on those instances, and that's something where he can find a way to get his rhythm. I think number two is just like um, because he established himself as a shooter, some of those up fakes, you know, step through, finish at the basket, just open up a little bit more in his game. Um, and I think the number three is just like you know what I guess the only upside to a game like last night is like you can play free. Now, you can play free like McDaniels and take a three-on-one <laughs> <laughs> pull-up three. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the other way of playing free is, like, especially as a shooter, you know, um, you get to take as many shots as you really want, be more, like, selective with it. You don't have to hunt it every single time. And, yeah, I was really happy for Grady to to break out. Um, I thought he was he sounded really mature in the post game too. Mm -hmm. He, like, didn't really want to take any celebration out of it. He's just like, look, we lost. And, yeah. Um, it's tough and like he's he he's seems coming, like his head is on straight you know what I mean yeah and I think look it's been it, it has there's no way it hasn't been a bit of a humbling first pro year for him like like yeah, we talked course. about it when he first went down to the G League like I, I basically asked him like you know is your, how is your confidence he's like I haven't had a cold streak since I was like a child like I'm not worried about my jumper but as that extent that was at the start of the G League then you're talking about a month later you're still in the G League and then like you're pulled out of games for this conditioning program um, you know, I, I don't think it has, I don't think you have a choice, but they'll let that humble you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he's really seen how much work he has to put in. He's also probably, you know, it's, it's probably front of mind that in his third game of his career, he got 16 points in, in a close game against the Sixers. Yeah. And then very shortly after that, he was in the G league because things came apart. Mm -hmm. So I, I wonder too, if that's fresh for him that, Hey, this, this only lasts as long as you're playing this well. I also thought it was really good to see that from him a night after in a double overtime game, he only played 10 minutes. And yeah, he was, I, good in the, he was good in the first half. He just never saw any time the rest of the Yeah, way. he. I was just a little worried that maybe, you know, he had the Chicago game where he played a little bit more but didn't get on the board. He only took one shot in 20 minutes yeah, in that right. game. And then the Houston game was not a very good game for him. And then, okay, against OKC, you barely play. You know, where's the confidence level at? Sure, where, you, yeah. Where's your readiness sure. level at? Um, so I thought I thought that was good. And, yeah, I'm with you. Like, the, the, after the game, immediately going to the, yeah, well, we lost. Like, mm -hmm. like what, that, that's, you You want guys to say the, the right things and feel the right way about those things. So those are, uh, those are good.